Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and since the start of the league, something I wanted to get around to uh, was testing the Deadeye new Rupture nodes, which focus more on crit bleed. Uh, not necessarily having to be crit scaling bleed, but at least critting with your bleeds. Um, to begin with to get the rupture procs and I did actually end up going crit bleed scaling So using replica at Siri acuities for perfect agony uh, And trying to get a bit of crit multi through your boy abyssus And then of course we are using something a little bit silly and that is melee puncture So this is a deadeye melee puncture crit bleed scaling build uh, it is currently using a one hand and shield, but I started out with a two hander um, Since the best thing you can do for this is a sword basically and you can do a two hander which is quite a bit more DPS, but um, Problem with that is the playstyle is a little bit jank and you're probably just about never getting max bleed uh, Stacks through crimson dance and through your ruptures and through your ruthless with um, Something as slow as a two-hander So I ended up recrafting into a quick one-hander with a shield and then the playstyle becomes pretty damn fast with the uh, shield charge with the dash with the really fast stabs through puncture and um the damage is still more than adequate, so it seemed like the right move to go into one hand and shield. And the reason behind choosing Puncture is because one of the alternate qualities gives you two additional striked targets. So it's basically a built-in ancestral call. When I saw that, I was all like, yeah, I think I want to try that out as a melee version and see if um, there's any viability there. So, of course, you could instead build something like Lacerate, you could build as a... Uh, your bows and then do puncture uh, with bow as well but I thought this was pretty cool to build around as melee puncture and it's been working out quite nicely you can see there's an explosion chest in the build so the enemies do destroy their corpses when they die I don't think it's doing too much on the clear because uh, for the most part I am using the puncture with the additional strike targets and then melee splash and that just about hits everything um, whenever it hits and uh, does some pretty nice clear by itself already. The um, explosion scaling isn't really there by a huge amount because we don't have that much increased physical damage. Uh, it's mostly like crit and crit bleed and crit bleed ailment, stuff like that. So the explosions really, I don't think, are hard carrying. But we do have addi an additional curse on the chest as well. So it is currently using vulnerability and poacher's mark because Deadeye does not have much um, in the way of an ascendancy for... Uh, ascendancy options for things like this. So basically you are forced to take the rupture nodes You are forced to then take the mark nodes and thus we have a slightly more powerful poachers mark And then you are forced to take the gale force nodes that give you um, 10, 10 stacks of gale force and 3% less damage taken per stack. So ultimately that generates 30% less damage, so even with Abyssus up, that means that um, usually when we have 10 stacks of our Gale Force, we're pretty resilient to the first hit that's going to come our way. And um, that comboed with Wind Dancer especially means that you can actually be pretty tanky. So there isn't too many deaths going around on this character, uh, even though you would kind of expect it to be since Abyssus. Um, but it has actually really highlighted the strength of that little Gale Force node to me. Uh, because it's super potent in some of these first big hits like that metamorph there with the slam on the tier 15 16 map with some damage mods and metamorph stuff pretty powerful stuff and through an abyssus and yet we still did not die so something to look into but uh, it is kind of hard to get 10 stacks up always as you can see we do have a spell slinger on left click and that is linked to nothing so it's just a spell slinger and since it's on the left click it's basically just something to uh, keep cycling as a skill use and it does nothing but give gale force stacks so we are quite frequently at 10 stacks and you can see that with crimson dance stacking bleed uh, the bleed can be pretty good it's something like four to five million dps at the moment though i imagine there's more high rolls involved with ruthless procs and stuff but um Overall, it's been solid enough, and I think you can go quite a bit less for a good feeling bleed character. Uh, but for now, Puncture, 
crit rupture. It's been a bit of a success. I'm not at all too disappointed with how this turned out. I uh, don't have any more end game to show you at the moment though. Just another little boss fight and it's a pretty active playstyle as you can see with the dodging and all of that. So let me show you how I built the character. So here is my little character, uh, level 91, bleeding viewers by the day. Anyway, it's not at its strongest right now on Twitch and, uh, you know, with the whole harvest. Yeah, we're not too popular. Anyway, um, level 91, Deadeye. So we are based around the Puncture Gem, as I said. Divergent Puncture, Alt Quality, Melee Strikes target two additional nearby enemies. So that's just a built-in ancestral call, and that was the entire inspiration behind a melee deadeye. But the entire reason we wanted to do a deadeye is for these new nodes, rupturing critical strikes which inflict bleeding also inflict rupture. So that is ruptured targets take 25% more damage from bleeding, and bleeding on them expires 25% more quickly for three seconds. Up to three ruptures can affect a target. But part of that is also the fact that we wanted our um bleeds to be pretty long term and puncture has eight second default bleeds so then with um a bit of extra duration from certain sources it's still a very lengthy bleed and we can still get pretty good usage out of crimson dance as well uh, since you have to stack up a lot more of your bleeds and that means that it's harder to do if they're expiring really quickly uh, so we have that um and then on top of that, just a stronger mark in the form of Poacher's Mark, uh, which is coming from a ring over here, and then going into Gathering Winds and Wind Ward, which is a whole bunch of defensiveness and speed. Uh, we do then have Crimson Dance. I'm currently specking into these nodes, as you can see. Um, we use Replica Atiria Acuities because they have perfect agony if we've dealt a crit recently, and then that means we don't have to path up to grab <clears throat> perfect agony up here which i don't know maybe it's worth saving the points for the gloves they're just an interesting interesting use of a replica that i figured i'd shoehorn into the build one way or the other uh, otherwise passive tree has taken me a good bit of um staring to figure out for optimization i'm still not completely sure it is i really would have loved to have taken acro and phase acro so i was originally going more crit heavy down this side but uh, crit scaling and crit multi-scaling really hardly adds shit. So let's say I've got 4 million DPS right now. Um, thanks to Perfect Agony and um, you know Abyssus and all that. Extra crit multi. If I don't have Perfect Agony, I've got, let's say, like 3.5 million DPS. Like, it's a fairly negligible increase considering these, like, nodes over here are a similar sort of gain. Um... Otherwise, yeah, we are doing two clusters, two large, two medium, um, and four small. So the large are pretty negligible. Uh, at this point, um, Fuel the Fight doesn't do anything for me because I've already got Mana Leech somewhere else um, over here. Uh, wound Aggravation is a pretty good node, and then Martial Prowess, just good for accuracy. But the main draw is the fact that we get to use medium clusters, and the medium clusters we're trying to go for in a perfect world are Hemorrhage, so Crit, and then Crit Multi, um, sorry, damage over time with crits, um, ailments from crits, and then rent. So that's bleed duration and damage over time with bleed. Uh, just so we can get a few of these to counteract what rupture is doing. But then um, crafting these is fairly simple. You just get lots of different types of good variations. There's a lot of good results. So then we have hemorrhage and wound aggravation here. And over here we have um, wound aggravation rend. And over here is rend and hemorrhage. And then just whatever life clusters you really feel like. Um, and that's about it for the passive tree. Also Wind Dancer just for some defensiveness. Uh, so I end up crafting a sword. Basically started out with just attack speed and um, bleed 100% more. So the 100% more bleed thing is basically the most important mod on these types of swords. And uh, I did craft a couple of two-handers to begin with. So this is what a two-hander looks like. Uh, which has you know quite a bit more base fizz, but it's quite a bit slower. We can still finish it off to get it some attack speed, and still going to be like 30% slower in the end, and also pretty hard to fill out life on the build without a thick shield. So uh, keep that in mind if you want to try the two-hand side of things. It will be bigger DPS, but it will be a little bit clumsier. Um, basically just did like some alt regal spamming for these until I got some good things. I started out with the attack speed and crit mult um, bleed mod, I then imprinted a lot until something happened, but uh, could have obviously gone bigger if we wanted to. Um, 
and then uh, finished it off with a multi-mod, uh, so the Fizz and the Fizz, and then did a non-attack into attack uh, to get rid of the multi-mod um, from Harvest and ended up hitting life gain on hit. So we can still remove life and slam on crit and make it a much nicer sword, but at the moment, that's what we've got. Uh, the chest itself, it's a reuse from previous build, so Awaken Rob, both Explode and Additional Curse. Uh, the Explode and then just everything else on top of it is pretty easily harvest craftable. Uh, we can still get attack crit instead of, let's say, one of the resists, but didn't have that option available to me yet, so the attack crit is a little low there. Um, grabbed a poacher's mark ring with a bit of accuracy, trying to get higher life on it, but still struggling. Um, a vulnerability base ring, though you can obviously just craft one with vulnerability. And then it's just got some resists on it, which um, aren't doing that much because I originally budgeted for something like the sword with this type of resist shit. But then when I got another shield on, resist became a lot easier to cap. Uh, this shield just, I think, pristine fossil spammed or harvest life spammed, I can't remember. Uh, just three life mods in the end. Pretty simple to do with um, all that type of um fossil or harvesting and then you can add life remove life whatever put on aspect of the spider as well because um i want um an aspect of the spider to slow things and make them take increased damage got the abysses puncture damage melee crit multi bunch of fizz but a fizz on the sword to begin with really isn't that important because we get a lot from abysses we get a lot from puncture and then um just various other little sources too uh, at zero acuity, using Rislatha's coil, it's going to give us slightly more high rolls, but sometimes some low rolls. And then um, my elusive boots that I used from a previous character as well. Also using Ungol's Harmony, so a bunch of extra crit from this amulet, uh, which means that we'll have much smoother crit chance for our ruptures and our uh, perfect agony dots. Your critical strikes do not deal extra damage, doesn't really matter because... Uh, it doesn't affect the bleed portion of it through perfect agony. I don't think so anyway. Fuck me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, and then just some flasks, you know, bottled faith. Pretty cheap at the moment, but really good for filling out crit since I don't have any crit on the foil or on the chest. But um, either one of those basically cancels out the need for a bottled faith altogether. And then diamond, silver and um using deadly elements as a swap for single target because currently we're using puncture um vicious proj which funnily enough works for the melee portion of puncture as well since puncture is a projectile melee whatever physical bow apparently this works as well so why the hell not use it uh, you get a big multiplier there using multi-strike for faster applications and playstyle brutality Melee Splash, in this case I've got Divergent, which just um, means that you do more damage to the uh, splashed enemies. But an Awakened is probably better just for area, I'd say. I haven't tested it out, but I stuck to this one right from um, early levels. And then uh, Ruthless over here. But for um, single target, take out Melee Splash, put in Deadly Elements, and we've got billions of bleed DPS. It's something like four or five million, so it's not the biggest, but it is a very fast playstyle, and it does give us a very nice um, sort of stacking of the bleed. And lastly, if you want to know what the MTX are, which I don't know, just some set I put together, uh, nothing too special. Goats have Thaumaturgy, uh, Despair, some sort of gloves, boots, Malice Weapon, Celestial Shield, Demonic Weapon Effect, and Thaumaturgy Cloak, because that is a cloak apparently. So, um, yeah, an attempt at bleed puncture. We gave it a shot. Here it's where we are. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, would I recommend copying it? I don't know. It's fast, decent. It's a good example of bleed. But uh, maybe you could do better with bleed with some non-crit versions and stuff. I don't know. It was fun. I didn't mind doing it at all. I'll leave it up to you guys. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.